you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon you, and you will be my witnesses even to the ends of the earth. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May the power of the Holy Spirit come to us, we pray, O Lord that we may keep your will faithfully in mind and express it in a devout way of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us offer this Mass for the souls of João, Maria, and Nivia Vieira, David Melinger, Thomas Thomas, Frankie Sanchez, Juanita Aguilar, Charles and Victoria Tuzo, Sam and Marie Tuzo, Roger Elisigaray, Deolinda and David Freitas, Richard Valencia, Stephen Beron, Robledo Salvador, Monsignor Sabino Venco, and for the successful surgery, special intentions of Claude Tomaca. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled through the interior of the country and down to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They answered him, We have never even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. He said, How were you baptized? They replied, With the baptism of John. Paul then said, John baptized with a baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 men. He entered the synagogue and for three months debated boldly with persuasive arguments about the kingdom of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing to God. God arises. 
his enemies are scattered, and those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so are they driven, as wax melt before the fire. Sing to God, O kingdom. But the just rejoice and exalt before God. They are glad and rejoice. Sing to God, chant praise to his name, whose name is the Lord. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. The father of orphans and the defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. God gives a home to the forsaken. He leads forth prisoners to prosperity. Sing to God, angels of the earth. <clears throat> Alleluia. If then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The disciples said to Jesus, Now you are talking plainly and not in any figure of speech. Now we realize that you know everything and that you do not need to have anyone question you. Because of this, we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, do you believe now? Behold, the hour is coming and has arrived when each of you will be scattered to his own home and you will leave me alone. But I am not alone because the Father is with me. I have told you this so that you might have peace in me. In the world you will have trouble but take courage, I have conquered the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus uses simple language and parables to illustrate the abstract truths he taught with a great sense of authority and certitude himself and his teachings. That's why Jesus talked in a way that his disciples would understand him. And for that reason, the disciples said to Jesus, Oh, now you are talking plainly in that anymore in figure of speech. Somehow they were amazed why Jesus was talking plainly at the time. He also talked in metaphors and in veiled language. Even then, his disciples could not always follow what he was saying. But this time, Jesus was talking plainly. 
and not anymore in a figure of speech. And for that reason, they said, the disciples said, because of this, we believe that you came from God. So my dear sisters and brothers, it is in the nature of belief that we do not need to know all in order to believe. So in today's gospel, it is the Lord who knew and they believed in Him. The disciples believed in Him. The disciples understood the veiled language, though not fully. With this knowledge, they had basis enough to believe without going against reason. But the question is, what kind of belief? It was just an intellectual ascent, not from the intellect. It's not really a real faith. They might have said that now, oh, we understood now what you are saying. But they might be perfectly understood and believed, but they did that all because they found nothing illogical in the words of Jesus. That what Jesus was saying is all truth. That's why they believe in Him. But you know, the real faith is not just saying yes in your mind. Intellectually, you know, but here is the important. In the heart, faith will be realized when trials come to test. And for that reason, he said to his disciples, the hour is coming and does arrive when each of you will be scattered to his own home and you will leave me alone. Somehow they have said yes to Jesus. They have said yes early year. Yes, we believe in you. We follow you. They have said yes earlier, yet the strength of that yes would be tested when, when trials come. When they encountered problems and difficulties in life, that faith will be tested, that yes to Jesus will be tested. And what happened? They did. And only few stay committed. So that doesn't mean, my dear sisters and brothers, that the disciples or we, for that matter, are in complete control of ourselves. Even we can ask ourselves, just like the disciples, how often we say yes, yes and yes again the Lord. Yes and yes again to the Lord. Yes and yes. We commit ourselves to this and to that. It's, everything is for the Lord. We said yes. How often we say yes? And how often we have disappointed him because we did not follow his commitment because we said yes but at the end it's no so that's why my dear sisters and brothers neither will ourselves be alone but remember he warns Jesus warns the time will come when you leave me alone. The time will come when you leave me alone. But even the disciples leave Jesus alone. Jesus said, but the Father will be with me. 
the Father will be with Him. Neither will ourselves be alone. You will be peace, you, or you will have peace. And He assures us, I have conquered the world. So meaning to say, even we leave Him alone, the disciples live al al alone, but God, God never abandons us. Saints or sinners might be. God will never leave us. And that is what the gospel of yesterday. You remember during the ascension, the feast day of the ascension? What is the assurance of the promise of the Lord? I will be with you until the end of the earth. So God never abandons us. He takes us as we are with all our concerns and weaknesses. When it comes to loving and forgiving, He doesn't use any veiled languages. Because God does love us with an everlasting love. A love that initiates from Him. A love that does not discriminate. A love that does not judgmental. It's a complete law. Now the good news is, He has given us His Spirit so that our faith would grow from intellect ascent to real commitment. Because sometimes our faith is just, her, uh, is just from the head. But Jesus would change us if we cooperate with Him, that our faith would grow from intellect ascent to real commitment. Real commitment to the person of Christ. And it is good for us to locate where we are now in the growth charts in terms of faith. Yeah, in terms of faith, where we are now. So my dear sisters and brothers, let our yes to Christ may be growing bigger each day. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual dream. my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May this unblemished sacrifice purify us, O Lord, and impart to our minds the force of grace from on high, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
There is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after His resurrection, He plainly appeared to all His disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that He might make us sharers in His divinity. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the default, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took breath. Given thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more given thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Myron Cotta, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember us, our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially Joao Maria and Nivia Vieira, David Melengor, Thomas Thomas, Frankie Sanchez, Juanita Aguila, Charles and Victoria Tuzo, Sam and Marie Tuzo, Roger Elisegare, Diolinda and David Freitas, Stephen Beron, Richard Valencia, Robledo Salvador, Monsignor Sabino Venco, and all of God in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Bernard, Saint Magdalene of Canossa, and Saint Josephine Baquita, 
and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages, we may merit to become years to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. <laughs> Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The body of Christ.
I will not leave you orphan, says the Lord. I will come to you again, and your heart will rejoice. Alleluia. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have been imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Prayer to Saint Michael. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in God. Be God to put him in humbly pray and to the Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, trust in the Holy and all the Holy Spirit for all about the Most sacred heart of Jesus, Immaculate Heart of Mary, Saint Joseph, Saint Bernard. The Lord be with you. And the Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass has been offered. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Have a blessed day to all of you.